The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to the topic opportunity. Opportunity. The scriptures we just heard spoke about or reminded us of two parables the parable of the virgin and the parable of the talent now when you consider the parable of the talent first if we look at the old king james version the way that that's, that version used talent portrayed that there was a kind of ability that the master gave them. But if you look at the NIV, the NIV makes it clear. It says talents of money. We will look at this talent of money and the ability together and look at what actually happened in these two scenarios of the parable of the virgin and that of the talent, draw some lessons and look at what we should do with the opportunity that we have. In the parable of the talent, the Bible says that a man was going on a long journey. Then he called his servants and he gave them talents of money or talent. Talents of money or talent those days were units of weight, monetary units. Those days, money was not in notes as we have them. So if you want to carry a quantity, you have to weigh it. The Greek man will say talents of silver. The English man will say bags of silver. So they were units of weight. So he gave them money. But that unit of weight, talent at that time, or talent, is about 34 kilograms or 75 pounds. That translates to about 4,800 Ghana cities or $1,000. So if he gave someone five, it means that he has given the person about $5,000 or about 30,000 Ghana cities. He gave them to work with it. But he gave them according to the ability. So there is this issue of ability to, in this particular parable of the talent, ability. He gave them according to the ability. That is why when the man returned and they were giving account, the one who had five said, I have gained five more. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. Then the one who had two said, I have gained two more. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. There was nothing like very good, good. Because it was according to the ability. So everyone has done his part. He gave them according to the ability so there was nothing like good, very good, excellent, no. It was good, faithful servant. That is what your master gave you, and that is the ability he also gave you. For you to be an effective business person, you need both money and ability. You may have ability without capital. That money, if you do not have, your ability cannot make business for you because you need some support but when you have the money and you also don't have the ability you cannot not also succeed but when it comes to ability abilities differ but success is for all my ability is not like your ability and yours is not like mine some 139 says this
I read from verse 13. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Now, he is using some phrases and expressions. The 13 says that when you created my innermost being, you knit me together. Then 16 says that you wove me. And then 16 says that all the days ordained for me were written in your books before one of them came to pass. That is before anyone is born, the days ordained for him is written before. Now, the days, if the days ordained for you is known by God before you came, then when he was working on you, he was putting abilities in you. Your days goes with your purpose. And he wouldn't spend time knitting, weaving, weaving and all that if he was not fashioning you for a purpose. So every one of us at conception has been granted graces, abilities the power of mind and strength for use and for improvement. That is ability. The power of mind and strength for use and for improvement. But that ability is for all. That is why all of us can succeed. The lawyer can succeed. The capital can succeed. The clergyman can succeed. The statesman can succeed. The doctor can succeed. Everyone can succeed because we need each other. There was this young man who is a medical doctor. He has gone to the clinic. He's been consulting since morning. Around 1 p.m., he's hungry, and he said, decides to go across the street to fetch, get some food. He goes into a restaurant, and there are cooks. Chef, cook, they bring him the food, when you go to medical school, they don't teach you cookery. They don't teach you that. Way. So you can't say that I'm in my consulting room. You can't, I mean, you can't. No, no, no. When you are hungry, you need somebody with another ability to feed you. So this medical doctor goes to the restaurant for food. And when they fake the food, they didn't just put it in his palm. There is another someone who also has ability to craft things. So they put the food in a bowl made from another ability. Then he will have to sit down. A woodworker will have to fashion something for him to sit on. When he finished eating, he had to wash his hand. He went to the tap, he opened it, and water was flowing. That is an engineer. He washes his hands, he thanks his God, he goes close to his vehicle, he tries to ignite it, and it will not ignite. No power. He's sweating. Then there is this mechanic. It's not the engineer. Common fitter, fit ah. Somebody will be fitting, fitting things. Fit ah. Please, can you help me? Say yes. But when the young man opened the bonnet, he realized that it was just a little problem. It was the terminals that were not fitting well. But when he saw it, because he wanted money, he said, ha, I need to buy this. But this is a medical doctor who doesn't have any idea about the car. So the young man told him certain things and then he this had money. He went, he came back. A young man was sitting somewhere and this fitter tried to delay a bit so that the man would know that he's working. But what he was doing was that he was, he came with a stone eh, to just knock the terminals to fit the battle. Now he collects money. Let me ask you this question. The medical doctor, the engineer, the mechanic, 
the woodworker. Who is the best? Hmm? Abilities differ. That is why we must respect all men. You see, the one who is even a security man in your house is doing a good job. Sometimes when I'm going to sleep and I see my security man who is also an elder, my heart bleeds because I see that the condition in which he works, maybe I will not be able to do it. Abilities differ. But success is for all of us. The king seller can succeed. The medical doctor can succeed. All of us can succeed. God has made all this so that we will be able to manage his world. So that one ability cannot manage this big world that God has created. We need one another. So he gave them according to their ability. But what they all had in common was time. We read verse 19 of Matthew 25, where we read verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled account with them. Why he's settling account with them is that the money was from him, the ability was from him. If we come to God, the money, the resources he gives us, including the ability, is for us. So whatever we are doing, let us remember that one day God will call us into account. It doesn't matter how you are getting the money. Remember, a good and a purposeful life is led with the end in view. You must know the end before you begin. You must brace yourself for a good ride. You must know where you are going. See, you can, you can be... Taking money here and there. But remember that at the close of the day, you'll be brought to account. Asembi Ramika No that what they had in common was not the ability, was not the money. What they had in common was time. After a long time. Now that space was given to all of them. After a long time, from the time he gave them the money to the time he returned, nobody had an advantage. That period was given to all of them. Now when you go to the parable of the virgin, he's saying that from verse Six, five, and six. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. What the scripture is saying is this. What caused the oil to run out? was time. You see, the, the oil ran out not because the container was leaking, but it ran out because of time. There was nothing extraordinary about the other five the parable calls as wise. The, the advantage was that they understood time. And they took extra oil. The extra oil would not have mattered if time had not been a factor. So what caused the oil to run out was time. Because they all slept. They all heard the cry. They all woke up. They all lit their, their, their light. But the light would not 
the, the, it will not come up. Why? Because you have run out of oil. And what caused it was the long wait. So the time caused the, the oil to run out. That was the difference. What is time? Time is a mystery that we have tried to define. So the definition of time is the past, the present, and the future. Time is the past, the present, and the future. But the Bible gives us some meaning to time. He even tries to tell us when time began. Because God was before time. The Bible says in the beginning. So God was in the beginning. And he is, he is not part of the beginning. The Bible says, out of him all things flow. And into him all things come into. That is a great God. Let's go to Genesis. And then let's examine what time is. Genesis 1. From verse 14. And God said, Let there be light in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years. Now He's going to create lights, and they are going to mark seasons, days, and years. He's going to create Something to mark seasons, days, and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give lights on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day, the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. God saw that it was good. What is time from this reading? I would think that time is a governor. Time is a governor. He is the mayor of the earth. See, if you don't respect time, you will live to regret. That is why we said that time will tell. All of us are growing. We are growing because of time. Some of us are losing hair. We are losing hair because of time. Some of us, sometimes when you look at your face in the mirror, you wonder if you are the same person. This is you. See? But we, we are all losing hair. We are changing because of time. Nothing grows better under the sun. You see, God would have been a very, 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 very old man. By this time, God would have died if he were here. But where he lives... The sun and the moon do not supervise them. Where, well, if you live under the sun and the moon, change and decay. The hymn writer says, it's all around we see. If you want to keep fresh, you have to work very hard on yourself until you give up at a certain time. <laughs> if you ask your grandfather, he will tell you. How hard he has worked to keep his shape. But at a point in time, even combing the hair, the more you comb, the more they fall. So he decided not to comb because they will be falling anyway. <laughs> so you don't have to expedite that action. You have to keep them slow. Time is a governor. You need to respect time. It governs our life and it. Time is a gift. Psalm 118 verse 24 says that this is the day the Lord has made. The Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, so when you wake up to find a day, it is a gift. A gift God has actually given you to better your lot. So you can decide not to do anything in the day. Just be moving up and down, no purpose, no problem. Ask for time. It has been asked to govern the earth. It doesn't wait for anybody. It is fair to us. Yes, it is very, very uncompromising. Time is so uncompromising. But time is a gift. 
You have to use it to manage your life and to improve upon who you are. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Then the writer says, great is his faithfulness. He has granted us another new day. So when you see the sun, you see the moon, realize that they are governing your life. They are being faithful. But you have to take advantage of the gifts. Time is opportunity. Time presents chances, prospects, favorable occasions for advancement or success. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, this is what the Bible says. Ecclesiastes 9, 11. I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not for the swift or the battle for the strong, nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned, but time and chance happen to them all. What he's trying to say is that nobody has an advantage. You may be brilliant, but those who are brilliant does not mean that all you need to succeed is to be first class student in a school. No, because when you're a first class student, there should be a kinky seller, somebody who can make that for you to eat. There should be an architect to, to design a building. And there should be somebody who will be able to construct that building. So, but time presents chances to all. It says time and chances happen to all. It's time, it's opportunity. So when you enter university in Ghana, you have an opportunity of four years or more, depending on the course that you are studying, to deliver, to turn your destiny in a proper direction. So you have an opportunity of four years. Definitely, there will be a day of accountability because of the factor of time. So you are going to write your final paper. Let me go to, let's say, the WAS and BEC. That is where a lot of tension is. Your first exams, BEC. Two hours. You find out that the invigilator will come around, say, hi, hello, how are you? He is very nice. Then he says, start work. Say, one hour gone, one hour more. He's still nice. He's smiling. And 30 minutes more, 15 minutes more, his voice, his tone tends to change. Then he said, five minutes more, get ready to stop work. The opportunity of two hours is now diminishing. Then he said, please stop work, pens down. Pens down, pens down. <laughs> now if you, if you do, he will fight with you. Now he has moved from that nice man to, I don't know what you say. You know why he is doing that? The governor is causing him to change his voice. Because time is uncompromising. Once it is two hours, it is two hours. It should be fair to all. Time and chances. Remember your creator, the Bible says, in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Some day will come. You find no pleasure in them. But when you have strength, it's an opportunity. Human civilization has seen numerous people who have changed the course of history and influenced their sphere of living by their charisma, intelligence, and talents be it in the geographical expansion, arts and entertainment, science and technology, literature, politics, statement, and what have you. These individuals have seized history by their works, but time would not allow them to perform forever. 
We have Car- the Carl Lewis, the Johnsons, the Michael Jordans. You see, time will not permit you to perform and live forever. When it is time for time to tell you it is over, it is uncompromising. They have not lived forever. So what do we do? We have to organize our life around balanced priorities. Because you cannot do all things. Because there is not time for all things. There is time for everything. You can do some things, but not all things. And time will not permit you to stay here till you do all things. No. I mean, the human race will ask you to go. Sometimes when time wants you to go and you don't want to go, you, you realize that you have gone past your time. Your generation is over. You have to go and rest. Opportunity they had. Expires. Moses, by inspiration, said that a man's life is three score and ten. That is 70 years. And if he has the strength, according to Moses, he could go like 80 years or more. But Moses is not God. That is why I'm saying that by inspiration. This is not from God. Moses said it. So let's say that. If you want to live normally from day one to, let's say, 90 years, then God has actually privileged you. If you live for 90 years, you'll be living in three generations. Three generations. And I would define this generation as the entire body of individuals born and living together at the same time with one complete life cycle, with same attitude, Same ideas, same social beliefs, and same social platform and challenges. Now, let me take that again. You see, we have a group of ministers here and their wives. They belong to a particular generation. It is about 23 to 30 years. Now, the first 23 to 30 years is the period of formation, the period of learning, the period of grounding. That the next... 31 to 60 years is a period of service where if you have studied something, you are now a teacher, a period of acquisition, you can say, this is my wife, that's my husband, that's my car, that's my child, a period of acquisition of titles and all that. But you see, time will be pushing you on. Around 61 is a period of release, a period of relax, a period of consultation. But if you didn't do it well in the first and second generation, when it's time for you to relax, you can't relax. Yeah, because you have not worked. You have not used time wisely. You have not. That is why Paul says in Ephesians, be careful then how you live. Not as unwise, as wise. Because the days are evil. When he was talking about the days are evil, he was not talking about witches and wizards. He was talking about the fact that the time is running faster than you think. We are in evil days. Why do we need to seize opportunity? We need to seize opportunity because according to 1 Corinthians 7, 29, time is too short. I was listening to Billy Graham. He was being interviewed and then a man asked him, what has he, what, what has he learned in life after all these years of preaching? He looked at the man, he looked at himself, and he said, time is short. Time is short. Because he still has, he, he has, the, he has the spirit, but he doesn't have the energy. People will not tolerate him like they used to do in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. They will not. No, they will not. Time is short. But I want to say this morning that time is not just short. Time is too short. Two o eight. I was in East Legon when the the immediate (laughs) past chairman was elected. 
I was a district pastor in East Lagoon. I remember that I was in the house when he came home. I was part of the people who prayed. And then because of some issues, I had to look for policemen to guard the house. When I was doing all that, I didn't know that <laughs> 10 years down the line, you yeah, look at that. I was in East Lagoon. And from 2008 to 2018, it has just been like a vapor. 10 years. But you see, soon we are here. This as time presents as chance. I've said the first one is that time is too short. Very soon you realize that time will leave you behind. Number two, there is time for everything, but there is no time for all things. Because you are not created to live forever. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 to 3 says that there is a time for everything. A season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to embrace and receive a chairman. And a time to say farewell to a chairman. There's time for everything. Number three. Opportunity. It's not always available. An opportunity is not permanent. It's not always available. And it's not permanent. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 10, this is what the great apostle Paul said, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your consent for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. He says that you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. So sometimes there could be that concern, but the opportunity may not be there. See, there are women who are worthy. They could take care of 10 children, yet they don't have the opportunity. They don't have it. When we were in South Africa, a friend of mine was going to have a wedding. And I loved to be around. In fact, I, I thought that as for this one, I could ask some permission. I have to be there. Then my wife said, do you have money? You see, do you have money? That was a good question. Because even if the international business director says, come. For wedding, you are not going to come with the church's money. So my wife said, do you have money? So I have to go and make some calculation. I realized that I'm concerned. But my pocket will not give me that opportunity. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. When I was in PIWC, 
I felt sick. And my doctor advised me to take time and get ill so that I can recover. That was a good advice. So I decided that, okay, let me rest. And then so that I can recover. One of those days, I heard that a sister has been rushed to the hospital. Someone called me. Then I said, ah, what is it? And when he was trying to describe the kind of ailment, I was a bit disturbed. As I stood up and I started putting on my jacket. And when my wife came to the room, she saw me. She said, where are you going? So I'm going to see this one at the hospital. She didn't say anything. But the way she opened her eyes, I realized that <laughs> she is telling me to go and die with him. Because you are sick. And they, they, they have told you rest. You hear a member is sick and you are going to visit the member. I said, go. Go and die together with him. You see, because, you see, here I am, I'm concerned. But my health will not give me the opportunity. Opportunity is not always available. These are great preachers. I can see Apostle Atuadi Sin, Apostle Anson, Apostle Nobulachi. I can see them sit down for me to preach. But you see, their health may not give them the opportunity. <laughs> opportunity is not always there. But when you have it, Galatians 6, verse 10. Opportunity, because it's not always there. This is what Galatians 6, 10 says. I rejoice, therefore, as we have opportunity. Let us do. The way do is the perfect definition of a verb. Take action. And then when he says, when you are taking action, be careful. Because the past will be brought into account. So he said, do, but do good. When you have opportunity to be a manager or a director, don't say, bless God. And then, corrupt the system. Take action. But the action that you are taking, take a good action. Because at the end of the day, God will bring the past to account. When you have the opportunity, says that, do good. Opportunity is not always there. But when you have, do good. The fourth point is that opportunity seized is the basis of reward. When you seize the opportunity, that will bring you reward. See, the man said, good and faithful servant, well done. Paul told the Philippians that my God will supply all your needs because of the opportunity they seize and they send what it does to him. Then he says that my God will supply your needs. Opportunity seize is the basis of reward. But there are some factors against opportunity. Sometimes God grants us that space. But factors like the fear of men. Fear of men. God has given you the space to become the chairman of this great church. The fear of men can cripple that opportunity that you have. Inability to assert oneself to the tax. Sometimes the opportunity is there, but the person is very slothful, lazy, and the opportunity runs out. Lack of concentration on the tax and the space that time has given the person then opportunity runs out. I think some of these things, Saul will be a, a very good teacher. See, Saul was made a king. He will leave the palace and chase only one man. At that time, he was a boy. The, a boy who describes himself as a fly. The whole king will leave the palace looking for one person. He didn't concentrate on the job. He was looking for an enemy. All his life. You must concentrate. Then another factor that's militate against opportunity is delay. Delay. In Genesis chapter 43, verse 10, the scripture says this 
if we had not delayed, we would have gone and come back two times. This was a statement that Judah made to his father. Because he didn't want to release them to go. Now the old man was so angry. Things had gone back. And Judah said, if we had not delayed, we would have gone and come back twice, two times. So delay, you can delay certain things forever. And you may never recover them. You can delay even your own destiny. And then things will slip by. Do not delay. When the opportunity presents itself, the Bible says, do. Take action. But take good action. As I conclude, I want us to consider Samuel. The book of Judges are events that took place between Joshua's death and the rise of Saul and Samuel. Samuel was not a priest. He was one of the judges of Israel, in fact, the last of the judges, but he functioned as a priest and a prophet because he didn't belong to the Levites. He was brought there to serve, and by so doing, he functioned as a priest, and he was also a prophet. But his generation had this kind of foundation. Judges 2, verse 10 to 13, the Bible says, after that, whole generation had been gathered to their fathers. Another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what, had, what he had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and self bow So we are seeing that he was born at a time where people did not know God and they self bow and they Asherah. Let's hold that one. He was also born at a time where the Bible says that in those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as he saw fit. Lawlessness. Israel had no king. Everyone did as he saw fit. He was also born at a time where the Bible says that in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions, even though there were priests. There were no many visions. The word of God was rare. But Samuel took his time, seized the opportunity. By the time he was leaving the scene, he had anointed two kings. So it cannot be said of Israel again that everyone is doing what he deems fit because there is no king. No. Two kings. By the time he was leaving the scene, this is what the scripture says in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. He let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba, that is from the north to the south, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh. And there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word, that is the word of God in Samuel's mouth, came to all Israel. By the time he was born, the Bible said the word of God was rare. There was no revelation. But now before he left, from Dan to Beersheba, everybody recognized that he is an attested prophet of the Lord because they were hearing, thou says the Lord again. And the Bible said no word of his fell to the ground with that being accomplished. Now listen, you can change your world. We can possess our nations. We can turn things around. You have an opportunity to live. Now, chapter 7, 1 Samuel, from 3 to 4. Remember that they were, they didn't know God, they were seven bound and the Asherah. This is what Samuel caused the Israelites to do. And Samuel said to the whole house of Israel, if you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourself of the foreign gods and the Asherah and commit yourself to the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. So the Israelites put away the Baals and the Asherah and served the Lord only. 
What a great man. What a great man. Someone lived in time. Seized the opportunity that time presented him to change his world and turn people back to God. Soon, your opportunity will be over. What will you want to be remembered for? Now, people who have seized the opportunity and done well, they bow with pride and they live satisfied. Let's take our last reading, 1 Samuel chapter 12. This was his farewell speech from verse 1. Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to everything you said to, to me, and I've set a king over you. Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I am old and gray. My sons are here with you. I have been your leader from my youth until this day. Here I stand. Testify against me in the presence of the Lord and his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Whose donkey have I taken? Whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? From whose hand have I accepted a bribe to make me shut my eyes? If I had done any of these, I will make it right. Can you say that? before your congregation listening to the people you have not cheated or oppressed us they replied you have not taken anything from anyone's hand Samuel said to them the Lord is witness against you and also his anointed is witness and also his anointed is witness this day that you have not found anything in my hands he is witness they said then Samuel bow out in glory he met a situation time presented on opportunity he sees opportunity and he turned Israel back to God what will you be remembered for the opportunity to be a parent how are you parenting your children the opportunity to be a wife how are you being a wife see there was this uh, couple that came to me, they have been coming to my house and see, they will not take my advice. The one day they came, I thought I was also tired. So I said, that, okay, please bow down your hands, please. Sister, pray. I bless your marriage. So pray that today I'm not going to have this young man as my husband. Then, when you finish, I'll bless it and I'll separate the marriage. <laughs> For about two minutes, she was not praying. She said, oh, now, Shahon, you are not praying. You, see, when you have an opportunity to marry, marry well. It is an opportunity. See, there are so many ladies who are in the church who don't have husbands. You, you have an husband, a husband, and look at what you are doing. An opportunity to have a spouse. An opportunity to be a minister of God. An opportunity to be a statesman, honorable. An opportunity to be a medical doctor. An opportunity to be a nurse. You don't have to be callous and see people die when you could have helped the situation. What will you be remembered for? Opportunity. God bless us all. So.